Honourable Nathan Rees, Honourable John Aquilina, Honourable Virginia Judge, Honourable Paul Lynch, Honourable Amanda Fazio, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there are five distinguished dignitaries present here, and there were five wicks <laughs> at the lighting of the lamp. And to me, this is a very auspicious moment, a moment of perfection, balance, and harmony. And I take this opportunity to congratulate the Honorable Premier on his very firm commitment towards Australians of Indian origin as well as from the Indian subcontinent. And no greater proof is necessary than to see that he has accorded permission for this great event today, despite having lost the Border Gavaskar Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and if there was further proof required, I would hearken you all back to the memory of 26 January 2008, when the Honorable Premier demonstrated his commitment towards Australians of Indian origin Australians from the Indian subcontinent by joining the Bollywood troupe on stage. <laughs> I'd like to also congratulate the Honorable Virginia Judge and Mr. Raj Datta for their tireless efforts and for ensuring that this great festival is celebrated in the hallowed portals of the NSW Parliament. It is particularly significant that this great festival, a festival that celebrates the victory of light over darkness, of the forces of good over evil, of progress, of hope, emancipation, <coughs> anticipation, should take place in what I regard as the world's oldest parliament building. India is the oldest democracy in civilizational terms. India is also the world's largest democracy. But it is here in NSW that you have a building dedicated to democracy, a temple to hopes and aspirations of people worldwide who came and made Australia their home, a building, a parliament building that is older than Westminster. And it is particularly significant that this festival should be marked in a hall which is full of books, which to me signifies the victory of knowledge, the victory of tolerance, acceptance, assimilation, and harmony over all those dark forces of intolerance, of violence, of disunity that seem to be plaguing the world today. I also bring good tidings, for I have come immediately after the conclusion of the first Indo-Australian Roundtable Conference a firm engagement between India and Australia. For we live today in a world in which we are natural partners. We are natural partners not simply because of the cliched cricket, commonwealth and the curry. Our relations have moved far beyond that to commerce, to coal, to communications. And there is a certain economic interdependence between India and Australia today, one that is ensuring a relationship, an emerging relationship, bordering on a strategic partnership, one that requires a firm commitment and a firm building block approach. At the political level, we have had 13 visits so far from India in 2008. We have had three visits from Australia. We have 85,000 new enrollments by way of students, India is the sixth largest export destination for Australia. We are also now the, the largest source of 
professional immigration into this country. And all this, to my mind, is essentially the dynamics that will power this relationship onto a firm track into the 21st century. We have a commonality of purpose, we have congruence of views with regard to terrorism, with regard to climate change. We are working closely with each other in the defense sector. Just last week we celebrated the occasion of the visit of the Chief of Naval Staff of India. And it is at times like this that great democracies such as India and Australia must come together and work together to defeat the forces of violence, intolerance that threaten global peace and progress today. And in this, I regard the Indian community, also those of the Indian subcontinent in Australia, as playing a very integral role. For this is a community that punches far above its weight. You have a firm commitment to your land of adoption, Australia, but you also have a firm commitment in the multicultural sense to your cultural heritage and legacy to your land of birth. I take this opportunity <clears throat> to wish on this my last, perhaps my last visit to the NSW parliament for this function. Good luck, progress, good health into the future. I take this opportunity to also thank the Honourable Premier for all the help and assistance and guidance and my good friend Mr. John Aquilina, Paul Lynch, Virginia Judge and Amanda, all the help and guidance that the NSW government has given to me personally in the execution of my role as the Consul General of India. This great term and innings that I've had here is drawing to a close, but I shall renew this friendship with you upon returning to New Delhi and forever remain <laughs> your friend uh, and available to bring this relationship onto a higher pedestal into the future. Thank you very much.